Hello, in this video we're going to be talking about uniform circular motion, objects moving in circles. Some of the math we will do would help you calculate, say, the speed you would need to run with in order to make it through a loop the loop like so. So in this video we're going to go over some of the basics of circular motion and in later videos we will do a whole bunch of examples. So to define it off the beginning, uniform circular motion means you're moving in a circle, surprise, surprise, and the uniform part refers to your speed. So you're moving with constant speed. So you're going in a circle at a constant rate. Now we're using constant speed and not constant velocity on purpose. But uniform circular motion means you're moving in a circle at a constant speed. However, the velocity is not constant so you should think about why that would be you should uh, your your physics bones should be uh speaking to you at the moment and, and picking up what we're putting down here if it's got a constant speed but not a constant velocity there must be well there's only one thing that could mean S velocity is speed with direction and so hopefully it makes sense that if we're moving in a circle the direction of your motion is constantly changing. So therefore, the velocity is changing. Even though the size of the vector won't be changing, the direction changes. One thing we'll kind of define here um, is that the uh, velocity when you're moving in a circle is tangent to the path that you're taking. So for example, this is one we're going to look at for these first couple slides. This is a... Uh, let's say a marble rolling around the inside of a ring or something. Um, what we see is that at any given moment, you know, it's moving like this. If I were to draw the velocity vector right here, right at this moment in time, it's going this way. And a split second later, it's going this way. And down here, it's going this way. All of these are tangent to the circle. In other words, if we draw a radius to that point, we make a right angle with the radius. So it's essentially going perpendicular. It's kind of skimming the side of the circular path. The velocity is always tangent. A lot of times we call it the tangential velocity. Remember that if velocity is changing, you're accelerating. That's the definition of acceleration is a change in velocity. And so there must be an acceleration. Even though it's not speeding up or slowing down, it's changing its direction. So it's changing its velocity. It is accelerating even at a constant speed. To talk about that, we could look at those two velocity vectors and how they change, and even the direction of that change. So just based on defining what acceleration is, it's got to do with the change in velocity. The acceleration will be in the direction of my change in velocity. Well, here's how I subtract vectors. I connect them tail to tail, and I go from the beginning to the end, and I see where I end up. So my initial velocity vector was like this. My final velocity vector was like this. The difference between those vectors is this yellow vector. That's the change in velocity. Down and to the right. It was like down, a little bit down and a lot to the left. And then it became a lot down and a little to the left. So the change is this. This is the change. The acceleration is going to be in the same direction as the change in velocity. So my acceleration points this away. Right? It just shows me which way the velocity has changed. The velocity has become uh, a little bit more down and a little bit more to the right, or less to the left, if you like it. You might notice this vector points towards the center of the circle. We have a word for that. It's called centripetal. Centripetal is the key word that you're going to see a lot centripetal with a p centripetal acceleration it means center seeking it's an acceleration that seeks the center the change is the velocity to make it more pointing towards the center all right so it's center seeking so whenever you're in circular motion there is by definition a centripetal acceleration pointing towards the center of the circle because of the way the velocity is changing. Putting those together, this is what you're going to see. 
a sketch in your notes that looks like this would be very helpful Two really important terms they'll just give you this on a paper one sometimes you got to pick the right vectors when you're moving in a circle the velocity is always tangent and the acceleration is always towards the center that is something to memorize so in uniform circular motion velocity is tangent to the circle and acceleration points directly towards the center there's a right angle between these two things so the blue line is like the radius of the circle. So the acceleration points towards it, right along the radius, the velocity points tangent to the circle at a 90 degree angle. Okay. That may seem counterintuitive that uh, we're saying acceleration points towards the center of the circle, but it is true. You may have heard this dirty word, centrifugal, the F word of circles. You are probably used to feeling like and thinking that there is such thing as a centrifugal force that when you take a turn in your car and you, you take a, uh, a dramatic turn to the left, you feel yourself push outwards to the right, push to the outside of the car. That is not a force. So you are, this is going to be one of the more conceptually tricky things to wrap your head around because we're used to this idea of a centrifugal force. In fact, it shows up all the time, even in, um, you know, even in, in movies and TV and just general conversation, this idea of a centrifugal force. It is not a thing. There is no such thing as a centrifugal force. All right, so get it out of your head. There's a demonstration we will do in class to kind of uh, get this idea going but essentially what what you think of as a centrifugal force which would be a, like outward seeking pushing away from the center of a circle that's really just your momentum that's the fact that you want to continue moving in a straight line but there's no actual push pushing you in a straight line in fact the push is towards the middle of the circle so let's see if we can look at an example of this Here's the classic example um, where we're looking at a, a, a gentleman riding a car with um, maybe a bat, maybe a pack of eggs and uh, an open cup of coffee right on the dashboard. Man is a lunatic. But anyway, he is driving with his just mug of coffee sitting on the dashboard and takes a left turn. And we know from experience what's going to happen is that the coffee gets flung to the outside of the car. And the perception will be that there's some centrifugal force. By turning the car to the left, everything gets pushed to the right and pushed away from you. But if we take a bird's eye view and look at what's really happening, it's just Newton's first law in action that an object in motion wants to stay in motion unless there's another force. So let's say there's not a good force of friction gripping the coffee to the dashboard. Well, the coffee, then all things considered, if we're driving this away, the coffee wants to keep going in a straight line, and that's what it's going to do. Meanwhile, this guy has turned left and is turning away from the coffee, which is continuing its straight line tangential motion. And so because we are very uh, uh, self-centered and, uh, you know, you perceive what you perceive to you, it looks like the coffee is flying away. But you are the one abandoning the coffee. You're turning to the left and the seat is pushing you to the left. It must be, you were here, now you're here. The friction on your butt pushes you from here to here, to the side. And again, there's, not, there's more friction on your butt than there is on your upper body, and so you will probably also feel your upper body pushed to the right, quote, because it wants to keep going in a straight line. Really, your lower body is being pulled to the left towards the center of the circle, you perceive it as an outward push, but that's just you trying to move in a straight line. All right, other examples include the uh, Gravitron ride at the, uh, at the carnival. It's a very similar idea to right here. You know, that's the, that's the one where you kind of like put your back up against the wall and it starts to spin and spin. You feel yourself stuck to the wall as though pushed into the wall. Uh, but if we think about it, what's really happening, if this is you on the Gravitron right here, at one instant in time, the thing is spinning like this way, so you're moving like so. 
And so your momentum is trying to carry you this way. The only thing that stops you from flying out of the Gravitron and out into the street is the wall. And the wall pushes in on you to keep you in the ride. And now later you're here. And the wall pushes in on you and now later you're here. That pressure on your back is the, is the center seeking force that you feel. You feel a pressure on your back in that ride because the wall is pushing on your back forwards towards the center of the circle. It's very counterintuitive. It's the exact opposite of what you think from your everyday experience, which makes this one of the trickier concepts to wrap your head around. So you almost have to memorize it, and with practice and really thinking about it, you can start to wrap your head around it. But the idea is this, this outward push is only a perception. There's no actual force pushing that way. And the force that, the, the force that there is is some kind of force pointing towards the center of the circle, a centripetal force. So we're going to look at many different examples of centripetal force and how to use them. To wrap this up, though, we're just going to look at some of the math to, that we'll need to set things up. So centripetal acceleration, the acceleration towards the center, there's an equation for it in your data booklet. It depends on two things, the speed of the object and the radius of the motion. So it turns out the centripetal acceleration is equal to your linear speed or tangential speed, the size of that V vector we drew, squared divided by the radius. This will give us meters per second squared, so all is good. And so if there's a centripetal acceleration, we could also talk about a centripetal force, which is going to be some kind of net force. Since I'm doing MA, which always gives me a net force, not just an individual force. This will be some kind of net force. Or I can do net force is MA, and my acceleration is V squared over R. We're also doing some substitution with the new rotational variables that we have defined. So I can substitute in to do this in terms of my linear speed or my rotational speed. Remember that's radians per second. It talks about how quickly you're rotating versus linear speed it talks about how quickly you're moving in a straight line. And remember they are related by the radius. So lastly, to define the centripetal force then, it must be a net force. Since we're doing F equals MA, this must be the sum of all of the forces. That's the only time you can set F equals MA. Right, the data booklet will say F equals MA just by itself, which is awful. They mean net force equals MA. Same thing here. If I'm setting it equal to MA, it's got to be the sum of all the forces. So this is going to be very much like our net force problems that we did in topic two. We're going to sum all of the forces in one dimension and set them equal to mass times acceleration in that dimension. Now we're going to define a new exciting dimension, and sort of, called the circular dimension where we just care about whether something points towards the center of the circle or away. So this is what we'll jump into next time when we look at some examples. We're gonna to say towards the center of the circle is a positive centripetal force and towards the uh, away from the center is negative. Oops. Uh, but just like all of our other examples of forces, the net force is not its own force. You don't draw the net force on an FBD. You use an FBD to figure out the net force. So just like your data booklet says F equals MA, which is terrible, and we want to say sigma F, the sum of all forces equals MA to be a little more thorough. Same idea here. This is how I would encourage you to think about this. The sum of all forces um, towards the center of the circle is equal to MV squared over R. That's our equation for centripetal force. In the next video, we're going to jump into some examples of FBDs, situations in which we have uniform circular motion, and look at how some of the math will work for those. All right, but that's kind of your introduction here. So try to digest the idea that whenever something moves in a circle, the force causing it to go in a circle is towards the center of the circle. And this outward push is something we perceive Based on Newton's first law, the idea that these objects want to move in a straight line. That's definitely the most important concept, so think on it. All right, we'll get to some math next time. Until then, have fun.